Hello folks, this is Stock High Flies RC coming to you from the Man Cave. We're going to be putting together the 90mm Avanti S from, uh, from FMS. And I, if you watch my unboxing, I discovered, I was led to believe that this came with a vector system. I'm actually kind of glad it didn't. Um, but it did change what receiver I'm going to use. I was going to use an AR820T, which is a non-gyroed 8 channel receiver. So instead... And I do want to have, this is a very nice plane, I want to be able to have the ability, I mean, I don't need self-leveling and unsafe, but I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but there are un, uncontrolled environmental factors when you're flying around and you've got, you know, 700 hours flying around between battery and thing. You get a gnat flies in your eye, dust, something, all of a sudden you're suddenly blinded, at least I can flip a switch and make it fly self-level for a few seconds so I have a better opportunity to save my investment and hopefully keep it from hitting someone. So I'll be installing an AR83060T which has uh, AS3X and safe and all that good jazz and telemetry and also I have already updated it to uh, the AS3X Plus, the 3.1 software. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do that. I've already done that. I will put a link to the Spectrum's uh, tutorial on, on their official on how to do that. I would much rather you let them be liable on teaching you how to do it. And, and that's what I followed to do it. It's very, very simple. But I'll put a link to that video in the description of, of this video. And uh, so that's that. I've installed a new KM model afterburner. I did that off camera. Um, right there, but that will there. I have another video on how to install the afterburner, the KM model afterburner, so I'll refer you to that one. But the first thing we're going to start off with is installing the, the tail or the uh, exhaust. I did not get the thrust vectoring, okay, did not want it. However, to make for size and everything, they do have you um, have to install this is just bare foam here. Let me move this camera just a touch. Alright, now for this procedure, you're going to use three of these 16 mm, the longest screws that come with the kit, and then one of these little 8 millimeter machine screws. Okay, so you're going to use a total of four, okay, to put on the tail. You're just going to slide, there's carbon fiber spars, you're going to line that up, okay, it only fits in there one way. Good thing I've already maybe a little easier said than done. Yeah, I'm not doing that wrong. That should line up. That is definitely the bottom there. They have a little bit of foam. The, there, there's these channels that these are going to line up. These carbon fiber, you have holes there. It's obvious how it goes in there, but it's not wanting. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay. Get the bottom one lined up, and there it slides in like a glove. Now that one short screw, the short machine screw, goes right here on top, and, and it keys into that one tongue and groove hard place there that went in just now. You have to get to them. Okay, once you once it gets bite, you know it, and that you're gonna bottom out there. And now you're gonna take your three hard screws, or three uh, 16 millimeters longer screws. I suggest putting one bottom in. There's an obvious hole where it goes. Okay. And this way, in the future, if you decide, let me put my body up against there to get that to. This reminds me so much of the uh, F86. Their uh, FMS 80 millimeter F86, as far as how to put this tail on. Has a very obvious bottoming out point. Don't over it, just get it nice and tight. 
Don't, don't go crazy, just get it nice and tight. Screw holes are here on the side, right in the black, which is kind of a shame. Huh? It'd be nice if they gave us some little black decal stickers to put over that, but because now you're going to have this silver. And by the way, this is a two millimeter hex drive screw on all this. You're going to screw into you're going to metal screw into a metal brass housing, but understand that's encased in plastic. But that's a two millimeter hex drive. Okay. All right, and we'll go through the entire setting up safe and AS3X and all that in the radio video. I've done that so many times now that it's like old hat. Okay. Sometimes you have to wiggle pieces together, but once you feel that all, all, that uh, obvious bite, one thing they've made a mistake here. This is bare foam. This should be hardened plastic. Because a lot of people are going to want to sense their model. Think, well, I don't know if you can. I mean, the, the, they may not be able to do that. All right. So that's bare foam. This should have a layer of plastic on there, in my opinion. All right. Now, the rest of this assembly is entirely done with the 8 millimeter smaller uh, screw, uh, screw, machine screws. All right. You're going to get it in your kit. Is going to come one elevator servo lead. Okay, they're both labeled servo because you want to make this both elevators into one signal. Okay, now this is important. Anytime you're hooking servo leads together, let's move over here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, anytime you're hooking servo leads together, you see how you have. I'm sorry, I get louder when I get closer to the camera. Um, see how you got yellow on one side and brown on, or dark on the other? Just remember, the key to hooking up servo leads or hooking up servos to the servos is light to light, dark to dark. I don't care what manufacturer makes it, it's always going to be light to light, dark to dark. So I'm going to take my servo lead with this nice little locking. I'm going to pay attention. My yellow, my light is on the bottom side here. So I'm going to line up the yellow side. Okay, and clamp that in, and that's in there. If you see the, the yellow go run along the bottom, same thing here. Okay, I'm gonna hook up light to light, dark to dark. These little locking, these are the best little locking clamps. Love them. They have a very obvious locking point. And since this entire model screws together, if this one servo doesn't work, I can easily unbolt everything and swap out the servos. And if you look here, all you'd have to do is take those two screws out, pull the servo out and run that lead, and just tuck the, a new servo lead back in. So very serviceable, okay? All right, now you're gonna take this whole piece, back you up just a touch, okay? This entire piece, okay, is gonna rest just like that, okay? The hump here goes up. If you see these servos, they're on the down, they're gonna be down low. As you can see, you got them hard, five hard points, five places there. That's just gonna sit in there just like that. All right, now you're gonna take five screws. Hold them. We'll start with this furthest one back. Got support my hand underneath. Has a very obvious bottoming out point. Make sure I'm doing that right. 
And once you put the wings on before you put that, then I got to move around the wings. I don't want to do that. Okay. Okay. Here, here, and here only. Leave them alone. So only three screws at this point. I'll support it with the bottom of my hand. It has a very obvious stopping point. So those three screws only, here, here, and here. Okay, when you start seeing these plastic doublers dent in a little bit, that's where you, you're, you're tightening up. All right, now, we have this aileron, or this the, the elevator lead, into one lead. Here's labeled elevator, same story. I'm going to take light to light, dark to dark, hook those up. Okay. They have it. You feel them kind of, they kind of just click in. So it's kind of a soft little click, but it clicks in. Okay, keep that. Should have plenty of room for these. Take these servo leads. You got a little bit of room there. Okay, try to tuck them down in there the best you can. I'll give you a place. Now here's where you're gonna to need to pay attention. Okay. I wonder. Ooh, yeah, hey, that's smart. There's a trough there, because I don't want to pull those pins out. Okay. Alright. I'm gonna run that through there. There's a tiny little trough right there. I didn't see that. I'm sure it says that in the instructions. Sure enough, yes, it does. Okay, so this is where let me make the mistake. Because if that was laying across there, I might cut the wire. Okay. Take your, there's a little trough. Run that through. See how it runs through? It comes out the other end and makes those things nice and flush. Those, those lead connectors. Now I'm going to go back and hook it back up where I had it. Good. That ties some. That's a nice clean install. I like that. I like it a lot. Okay. Tuck that down there like that. Tuck that down there like that. All I've got left is my rudder. Okay. Grab my rudder here. Okay. Now, same difference. Got light to light, dark to dark. So I'm going to lay this here. Kind of let it pivot on my hand there. Pay attention, lights on that side. Okay. Put that clamp in. That's clamped in there real well. Okay. Make sure that all that kind of fits down in that trough. Okay. And then just put your pieces of your puzzle together. All right. You got three connection points now. Here, here, and up front. Them same screws. Okay. And we're going to go here. Yeah, that's a nice, very nice connection. Obvious bobbing out point. I'll turn the model on the side. Feed that in there like that. Okay, that's in there good. And then last but not least, up front here. Feel that kind of clicked in there?
Okay, that's in there. Now, we turn our attention. Pay attention. This is where we're going to have to pay attention to where our wings are going to go on. Okay, the larger or thicker diameter spar or the white spar is going to go up front in the big hole. Just, I always do a twisting motion. Sometimes they fit really tight. Then take your other one, and there's a protrusion right here. Kind of twisting motion to get that through there. All right. At this point, let's see, how do the screws go in? They're probably going from the bottom. Let's look at the wing. They don't go on top. They go in from the bottom, so turn your model over. Here's my hard connection points here. Okay. Go ahead and slide this wing here on here. I know I'm blocking your view, I'm sorry. But there's this line. Line that longer one up for by the line the uh, line it up, both of them up, twist them in, slide that in. That will help glide that that connect that that electronic connection there. Okay. All right. it has an obvious stopping point in the wing. You'll feel it. Okay. This is going to you don't have to worry about this. Is going to line up automatically. These uh, you got to time it just right. I mean, at the same time because both of these spars are of the same length. Okay, there. That's in there. Now, I'll take four screws. One there. One there. One there. One there. And it looks like you're going to end up with three left over. Okay. Probably use them if you install the vector um, tail. Uh, but I don't have that option, and I'm not going to. And the vector tail, the, uh, the uh, thrust vectoring. Obvious stopping point. It doesn't line up, it's kind of pressed on one end of the wing. Sometimes I'll use my body to kind of press in. I already see one defect in the design that I don't like. See this right here? These inlets? Just bare, bare foam. This should be lined with plastic. This area here, because you'll be grabbing it plain, that should be lined with plastic. FMS, you should have done that. Shamey, shamey, shamey. Great model, though. All right. If you're looking, if your wing doesn't quite line up, put one, get one screw going in there really well, and then you can use that as a pivot point to pull. Like, say, I've got this one there pretty well grabbing it. This one's loose. This one wasn't lining up. I could. We use this as a pivot point and pull that wing in, and that helps with the alignment of the screws. Like that's like it's doing. Okay, there it's got grab. These screws, they're obvious when they have grab. It's obvious, and with their bottoming out point is obvious. Okay. I'm not going to install any of the linkages yet. I'll do that as part of the radio build, as part of the radio video. Okay. But, oh, that's nice. 
the back end of these wings right here, that's plastic. That's hard plastic. There. That's a nice touch. That's a big model. All right. Back you up just a little bit. Okay. Put on our... The hardest part of the installation. Okay. All right. Folks. May I present the 90 millimeter FMS Avanti. That is one good looking plane. It just screams, it just screams, I'm fast. So we'll be definitely doing several videos on that to include a speed test, but more than likely the maiden will just be the maiden and possibly possibly just be a you know second flight. And then then when I do more videos, I'll do speed tests and what have you. But there you go, folks. That is the basic assembly. Now, like I said, the hooking up your control services to your push rods, I don't want to do that until I've got a radio in there and bound it up. And then I know that all my control services are centered. I'm sure they're centered because they want you to get in this bottle quickly. However, that's just a habit I have and it's a habit that has served me well. But that way, if one of these control services are not quite bench level or bench trim, remember, bench trim is everything looking nice and straight and level and, and, and geometrically perfect looking, lined up right on the bench. That doesn't mean she's trimmed for flight. It just gives you a really good starting point. Bench trim versus flight trim are two different worlds. You don't truly know if a plane is trimmed until you fly her, okay? because there might be little micro changes in the shape of the wing or stuff that you can't see with the naked eye, but does become as prevalent when you're flying the plane. And you may need a little bit of up trim on your aileron, or a little up trim or a little left aileron rudder or something. There's just a little bit minute change that where it no longer looks bench trim, but it flies trim and straight. So there is a difference between bench trim and flight trim. So bench trim is where you start because it gives you the best recipe for success and then you will trim it for, for real once you fly. Okay, another soapbox off topic. <laughs> okay, this is a big plane. Okay, I'm, well my license says I'm five foot ten, but I'm more probably five nine now. Um, but that's a good sized plane. Shouldn't have any problem seeing her, and especially with that KM model afterburn I put in there. KM models, thank you for sending them out for review. All right, the next video will be the uh, radio setup. All right, y'all have a good one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless y'all. And don't forget, they family and friends. And then Avanti S's 18 anniversaries. God is great. God bless y'all. Bye-bye. Oh, it blew here.